This is Inspiring Women. I'm Lori McGraw. I'm so excited. We're at the Health Conference, and today I am speaking with Jenny Shulkin, and she is the CEO and co-founder of a fantastic new company, Override, which is dealing in the space of chronic pain. Now, Jenny, you're, you've been an athlete, a competitive athlete. You are a Harvard Law degree lawyer, and now you're an entrepreneur with a pretty famous dad who you founded the company with. Thank you for being on Inspiring Women. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Lori. It's an honor. Yeah, well, this is great. So um, part of this Inspiring Women collaboration series I'm doing with Seven Wire Ventures, and I'm showcasing some of their incredible CEOs, and you are one of them. So Jenny, I want to just kick off a little bit with, give us the bio sketch. So how did you get here to become the leader and founder and creator of Override? Well, like you said, I've been a competitive athlete. I've been a lawyer. I was a criminal lawyer, actually, before I started this <laughs> venture. Um, and you might say I've lived several lives at this point in my young life. Um, so now I'm in the chapter where I'm an, entre I'm an entrepreneur. I'm in healthcare full time, despite trying very hard to be the black sheep of the family and not go into healthcare. <laughs> um, yet I find myself here largely in part because of my father who um, has been with me from the start of starting Override. And probably your biggest supporter, if not, you know, all the people who are rooting for your company. But Jenny, you're, you, this actually is a personal story. I mean, you, you, chronic pain is an issue that is yours to deal with. And so tell us a little bit about that before we go a little bit into Override. When I was in college, I suffered two traumatic brain injuries in fairly close proximity. And after we thought the second one finally healed was when I started developing chronic pain, first in my neck, then my back, and over the past 10 years, it's spread to many, many other parts of my body. So I have a pretty complex chronic pain syndrome or central sensitization um, that has really become a big part of my life, unfortunately. And so for uh, my last couple years of college while I was dealing with this and all through law school and beginning a career in law, chronic pain was kind of my secret. You know, it was something that only people very close to me knew. It was not something that I necessarily told the people that I worked with until I had to. Um, and so when it got to the point where, you know, I realized how central chronic pain was to my life and how much the issue mattered to me and how frustrating and fragmented the care I was receiving was, my father and I decided to go all in on this and build a better way to treat people with chronic pain like myself and give them the resources and the specialists and a team-based approach to care that we felt like I needed but didn't exist elsewhere. So we combined the personal and professional, and, and now Override is a big part of our lives. Well, first of all, I want to talk about Override, but I just want to acknowledge and say that that is something that you're dealing with. And we talk about chronic conditions. It means they're not going away. They're a managed condition that you're dealing with. And I'm just sorry that that is a part of your life. But in terms of that fragmented approach, maybe give us an example of sure. like what that looked like and what you're trying to solve for. I could give you a lot of examples. First, I just want to say thank you for acknowledging that because I think that a lot of people assume because of my role as CEO of this company that I have had my come to Jesus moment. I have found the magic cure and now I am here to share it with the rest of the world and to monetize it. And the truth is, it's it's just what you said. This is a chronic condition. You know, Override's goals are to help people improve function, improve the experience of pain, reduce anxiety, depression, pain catastrophizing, get them working, get them functional, doing the things that they want to be doing. And that doesn't necessarily mean that pain is over and pain will not be a part of your life going forward. For some it does, for others it doesn't. But I, I do think that that's an important clarification. Um, going back to your question now about fragmented care, you know, I've had many, many pain doctors that I've consulted over the last 10 years. I don't want to tell you how many. And um, I've heard from numerous different ones something to the tune of, Jenny, I think what you need is a really specialized chronic pain trained physical therapist who can help you with desensitization and graded exercise exposure. And I'd say, I agree, who do you know? You know, I can't find anyone who really understands how to work with chronic pain. And the doctor says, I have no idea. 
Uh. You know, or, or maybe I, I, I knew someone once and she was excellent, but definitely doesn't take insurance. And I think she moved. I haven't heard from her for a while. So, you know, it's things like that. But just as a very broad sweeping generalization, it's your pain doctor not talking to your surgeon, not talking to your physical therapist, none of them talking to your behavioral health care provider if right. you have one, and all of them giving you different messages, different treatment plans, and the patient is left kind of spinning in their wheels, not knowing who to listen to, and really getting nowhere. Right, and trying to figure out what you're, at every day, you're trying to manage through. I want to talk about the, um, you know, a lot of different aspects about chronic pain, whether it's stigma, the fact that you talked about it as a hidden issue, but let's talk about override. Sure. So so this fragmented approach, this whole person care approach, life management, what is override? What do you do? How are you solving this? At a very basic level, we are teams of pain physicians, chronic pain trained physical therapists, pain psychologists and certified pain coaches who all work individually with the patient and work together with as a team. And so this is all on a virtual care platform, which means we not only deliver the services, but we deliver the technology aspect as well, which yeah. many people have told me is way too hard. She's <laughs> one, and I understand why they've said it, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> Um, and so we basically give the patient a virtual environment where everything that they need is in one place. You know, yep. they don't have to go somewhere for physical therapy, another place for behavioral health, another place for pain education. We have all of it in one place. We take the burden off the patient of finding these specialists mm -hmm. so that the story that I just told you about doesn't happen to them. Mm -hmm. And we put them on one platform and we have them work with the patient, basically rinse and repeat. You know, it's individual treatment sessions, interdisciplinary care team collaborations, updating the personalized pain plan and continuing until we get to the patient to a point of maintenance and self-management where then we can discharge them. How, who has chronic pain? And so it's, I would say for many, a hidden condition. So you might not know, I might not know that you have yeah. chronic pain. It's not something that is obvious perhaps. How, how pervasive is the problem? One in five Americans have chronic pain. Oh, wow. So right now we're sitting in a room full of people. I'm looking in a crowded at, room, a lot of people out here. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at 50 people, which means 10 of them have some form of chronic pain. But I think what, what is important to note is that some of them are gonna have very mild pain that maybe prevents them from running more than two miles. Yep. You know, or maybe bothers them if they sit in a desk chair for six hours straight and don't get up. And then of course there's the other end of the spectrum that have chronic pain syndromes like me, mm -hmm. or maybe they have lupus or fibromyalgia or migraines, mm -hmm. um, endometriosis. You know, there's a lot of conditions that people don't necessarily think about as chronic pain. Mm -hmm. When people think chronic pain, they generally think musculoskeletal pain. Right, right. And I've got a leg issue, a exactly. knee issue. Exactly. Uh... And without naming names of competitors or giants in the field, many of whom we actually have collaborative relationships with, um, they're really good with that leg and that back and that neck. But when a patient like me comes to them, and I've experienced this several times, they quite literally send you away and yep. say, we are not equipped to handle this. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're interested in working with Override because they recognize that they're excluding a portion of the population because they don't have that expertise. Yep. Now, who? how does someone come to Override? So how do they find you? Is this their employer provides Override? How are you um, reaching the people that need your care? For the most part right now, we're working with health systems provider groups and health insurance plans. Yep. Um, we would love to work with employers. So if any are listening, please feel free to contact that, me. employers. <laughs> but, um, you know, my father's bread and butter is health systems. He spent his career running health systems mm -hmm. and he really understands the provider mentality. So primary care in particular, finds chronic pain patients extremely frustrating, extremely difficult, and they are more than happy to hand these patients off. Yeah. So that's one They're way. They're also is costly to a health system that doesn't necessarily know where to put these patients with, is my understanding. And so not having a clear plan for how to manage the condition um, just seems expensive and not great for outcomes. Well, the cost incentives is interesting because, of course, health plans or workers' comp want to minimize the cost huh. that they spend on each patient. 
health systems are pain doctors, not necessarily. You huh. know, some health systems do go at risk for some of their patients, but for others, they're actually making money off every injection, every procedure, every lab test, every oh, okay. MRI. So so it depends, you know, on, on a health system perspective, we do have some ways of financially aligning incentives, but we're also just depending on doctors to do the right thing for their patient and to refer them for specialty care where they need it. So now you're talking about <laughs> actually education in terms of like how to manage things in a very different way. That makes for some uphill battles for overrides. So, so far, you know, in this, what you're doing, what's happening for your patients? Are they like, how, how are they doing? Is this like, is the service working for them? You know, we have a very high satisfaction rate. Um, this is a program that really takes time and energy. And we're very upfront with our patients about that. We screen them for motivation to change. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sometimes we get from patients that they're happy on their opioids and they'd rather not add anything to their schedule. Huh. And that then doesn't become an override patient. Um, so, you know, we screen them for av availability as well because patients are often looking at two or three appointments a week. And even though it's virtual, that can seem daunting to them. But for the ones who have really committed to that, we're, to this, we're seeing some phenomenal results. Um, you know, we, we've got one patient who was bedridden for the past nine months. And one of the top three goals that she set for herself was, I wanna make it to the beach. And a couple weeks ago, she sent us a picture of just the most gorgeous sunset at Golden oh Hour. And she said, I did it, I made it to the beach and she thanked Override for it. Um, we have another patient who's had a really bad case of TMJ for 16 years or so, she's my age. And she was about to do some super expensive experimental procedure. And she said, she, she was a little skeptical of Override. And she said, but you know what, I figure, let me just try this first. Yep. And she's now doing so well that she's actually discontinuing care with us, which is great, wow. you know? Um, so. Look, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like a lot of digital health companies do that, you know, this works for everybody and, you know, we're the miracle solution that nobody else has figured out. Um, at a basic level, we're connecting people with teams of chronic pain specialists yep. and we're giving them pain neuroscience education through our digital platform yep. and we're holding their hand as they're making functional cognitive physical changes and we are seeing progress. Yeah. Well, Jenny, you're talking about, um, first of all, it sounds like a great solution and it's always so wonderful to hear the stories that you're really changing people's lives in a very meaningful way and I have to believe that is immensely satisfying as a CEO and building this important important company, but you're as an entrepreneur and as a CEO, I mean, the hard thing about hard things is that it's a really, really hard job. And so as you came into catching the entrepreneurial spirit, um, what's going well, what's hard? What, what, what is surprising you about building this company that um, you wish may perhaps were a bit easier? I think what's funny is I have always had really high standards for excellence and for myself. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am if I sure. didn't. Harvard Law. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yet the bar is still higher. And, you know, I think my team feels like I work really hard, that I try to push them to work really hard. And, and yet it's not like we're blowing this out of the water and we're a unicorn and we've hit some objective yet. measure of yet. success. So we haven't yet cleared the bar. Yep. I mean, we've got to do better. We've got to work harder. Um, but I think, you know, that feeling of just, you know, however much you're doing probably isn't enough. That's hard. And then I think similarly, you know, as a born perfectionist, I am a little bit surprised at the standards for perfection in this role. You know, there is no other role necessarily, I shouldn't say no other role, but I can't think of many, where you're expected to constantly find the right balance of empathy and discipline and, you know, kindness yet firmness and where you're constantly being pushed to improve your people skills, your business skills, just every part of the job. And so, that that is you know challenging and stimulating at the same time
Great. Okay. Well, that's um, you have very good perspective on those um, different things. Okay, Jenny, a couple more questions for you. So you co-founded this company with your father, who previous secretary of the VA, very well known, David Shulkin. And so, how's that going? Is it great all the time, <laughs> or is it is he letting you do your thing? Or uh, tell us, give a little, a little inside scoop on that. Well, definitely, he is letting me do my thing. Great. Um, sometimes I I wish that good he job, was... Dad. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's certainly not a normal co-founder relationship where we share the day-to-day -day responsibilities, but I'm also very, very aware that we wouldn't be where we are. You know, we would have never connected with Seven Wire or Martin Ventures or Signal Fire without him, that our health system relationships are from years in the making of, you know, his work. Um, and, and we really complement each other in so many different ways. You know, he's a visionary. He's mm -hmm. always been a visionary. Yep. Um, and he's not a detail-oriented person. And so I fill in that gap. And then sometimes I say, you know, every team needs a Tigger and an Eeyore, and he's the Tigger <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, wants to motivate people and, you know, to the outside world presents a rosier picture than I feel it is. And I'm the Eeyore that points out the problems, what we're doing wrong, what we need to do better, and sometimes is a little too vulnerable, a little too transparent with my investors, my board, and my own team. There's nothing about you, Jenny, that comes to, across to me as Eeyore. Oh. I just want to say, <laughs> someone's in need of a new analogy. We're on Inspiring Women, and you know I can't not talk about sort of the uh, the the point about women, and so the the gender divide remains. And despite progress and setbacks, and progress and setbacks, I know that some of the most progress we'll ever make is when women CEOs, women founders are successful. As you think about sort of what it means to be a woman leader, I would just love if you would close us out with your best advice for others, for young women who want to, younger women than you, who want to be Jenny Shulkin? <laughs> I think my major advice is to be yourself. Um, I have never shied away from my youth or my femininity. I I'm honestly surprised I'm not wearing pink right now. 75% <laughs> of the time I am wearing pink. Um, I don't put my hair in a bun just because, you know, that'll make me more masculine or anything. Um, and I know that being myself is what attracts people to me, um, whether it's investors or strategic partnerships or customers or just recruiting team members. So I think it's really important to not, you know, necessarily look at other models of success and say that you have to be that, but instead to be yourself and lean into your own strengths and your own personality. And, you know, if that ends up leading you to being the CEO of, of a startup, then that's great. Great. Well, listen, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you taking the time here at Health Jenny to speak to me. Absolutely. This has been an ep excellent episode of Inspiring Women. I've been speaking with Jenny Shulkin, who is going to lose the ER references. And Jenny, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lori. This was fun. <laughs> this has been an episode of Inspiring Women with Lori McGraw. Please subscribe, rate, and review. We are produced by Kate Cruz at Executive Podcast Solutions. More episodes can be found on inspiringwomen.show. I am Lori McGraw, and thank you for listening.